You know how many 49-year-old men do not believe in themselves? Yep. Most. You got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? So Gary, I think yes. one of the things we want to hit on is uh, women entrepreneurs. Yes. Angela yes. and I have owned our own business now for seven years. Yeah. Amazing. And we're together and we are a partnership and we actually still really like each other. Yeah. We actually <laughs> like each other even more than we did when we began. That means yeah. you guys are communicating. We, we are. Oh, 100%. I think we communicate more than I sometimes communicate with my husband. That makes a lot of sense. It and does. her husband gets really jealous too. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spend a lot of time together. Makes sense. Yeah, and you have to, right? It's- yeah, a business, you know, a lot of people that are confused about entrepreneurs, they don't realize that the business is the other family member. Oh, yeah. it's so true, 100%. I mean, it just yeah. is. Like, a business is another child, another spouse. It is, yeah. it's intense. Like, you know, it's it's the output of people's passion. It's kind of, I look at businesses more like friends. You know, like you don't, you know, you don't get to choose who you're born into as parents or siblings, but you do pick your friends, and a lot of times that's why those are the most meaningful relationships. You do get to pick your business. You do, and you create this culture, right? And you create this family. Like we have our theory family that is our staff, it's our spouses, it's our coach, it's everybody, and it we have this culture, and it's our clientele. Like it's not just selling to us; it's creating this lifestyle that people that we love. Not only that, when you then start breaking down how many hours you work. It's not work. It, it's well, not work. That, it's <laughs> not work to us at listen, all. I get that and that's yeah. why it's working. Yeah. But you start cutting down how much time you work on your not work or your work or your business or your product and you start realizing, my God, my profession, my career, my passion, it, you know, if you're lucky enough like you guys are, is the majority of what I spend my time on. Yes. Very true. Yeah. And, Very and, true. and I think that's why I'm so passionate about communicating my points of view on what the internet has created. Oh, yeah. You know, looking at the five of us, none of us were born into a world where this much opportunity existed. Our parents and grandparents no. did not have this opportunity. No way. They just didn't. No. The internet is like electricity. It's yeah. like running water. And I don't think we've understood that. And electricity and running water led to like better quality of life day to day. The internet leads to happiness if you choose to harness it. Oh, 100%. 100%. It's a big deal. But it's so yeah. hard to teach that you can be happy, right? You can go outside of those extraints that every, you have every, put on yourself. Everybody was taught to go to school and stay within a system. Or what yeah. about a woman? You were taught to be a mom, right? And stay yeah. at home. And that's oh, a huge thing that it, we yeah. push back in our small community because Angela's a mom, I'm not. And I've chosen to run the business yes. and not have kids. She's chosen to be a working a mom. mom. Yes. But then I have that, you know, struggle, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, both of you probably have that struggle. Like, oh, I think oh, everybody has yeah. struggle, oh, right? Yeah. I think, I think, like, as soon as you guys, as soon as you were just saying that, I'm like, oh, that's good. And what <laughs> I meant, why I said that's good in my head is, I'm a very big believer that if you see anybody in your circumstance succeed in happiness, forget about money, well then you can too. You know, like if there's anybody out there who was born into two uh, parents that were addicted to heroin and were never around and that person went on to achieve happiness, then every child who sees that person can point to that. I think it's very powerful to be co-founders, one who does have a family and one who doesn't, because your audience then gets to see themselves in one of you. Very, and so I think that's, true. I think that's, a, that's incredible. So it Gary, is, our big yes. question then is how do we get that out more? Our sort of story, because I think, I think we struggle Content. every single Content. day with our business. But, Content. but we do a ton of content. We do. More. more. <laughs> <laughs> we knew you were gonna say yeah. that to us. Because, <laughs> because it's the actual answer. And like yeah. even take this, right? You're filming this. Yes, yes. we I brought s- them with I, us. I yeah. see that. I see this as, in my mind, in that free deck that I put out, right? Yeah. The Gary yeah. Vee content yes. model. I see today, right now, as 34 pieces of content. Easily. There, there's Easily. The pop, that's right. That is the answer. Yeah. You know? That content. is easily. Yeah. Like that. I agree. And the fact that you answered so easily, that means you guys are halfway home. Now it's just execution. Yes. And maybe you're doing that too. I don't know. But I can tell you that up until I put out that deck, until I started getting loud about how I do the content, a lot of podcasters, 99% of them, see this as one piece of content. Oh, no. It's way no. more than that. But you understand? Yeah. yeah. He pushes us over there to do yeah, it. Good. To do and even so, more. And so the answer is more. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, how do you get bigger muscles? You work, work out, out more. Yeah. You know, how do you lose more fat? You work out more. How yeah. do you how do you get your heart healthier? You do the, you know like like 
The answer is more. I was saying something to Brandon, my best friend who runs Wine Library now, who I built Wine Library with, um, who I've known since I was 14 doing baseball cards, and I said something to him. This is a true story. This happened only a couple hours ago. I was telling him about my ambitions for him as an executive at Wine Library and why I think we can be way more successful next year. And I said to him something pretty powerful that I'd never really articulated. I said, Brandon, you know the guy that you worked with those 12 years, the one that you admire and think is the best? I currently, in my current form, as a businessman, as a person, as a father, a husband, a man, I view that guy that was me only a decade ago and I referenced a former employee of ours who was like a C minus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it really took him back. And it's actually the truth. I can't believe how much better I am today than I was 10 years ago. And I thought I was the best 10 years ago. You can imagine, one of the things that I'm most proud of is I only give advice I took. Over the last 10 years, I have become better. I, there's nothing else to say. I've become better. But how do you become better? It's maybe the main question One there. step at a time. Yeah, patience. Your, your answer, your question, your, 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 your question was very, very basic, right? Yeah. Very easy to understand. You yeah. said, how do we get our message out more? Yes. My answer was more content. Yeah. yeah. You have a podcast. We do. I want you to transcribe this interview into a LinkedIn post. I want you to write a Medium post. I want you to have your own blog on your own website. I want you to take seven quotes from this interview and put pictures over it. I want you to take seven <laughs> clips and put it on Facebook. I want you to put it on YouTube. I want you to put three one minute clips from this on YouTube. I, like, I want you to make an infographic of what I'm saying right now of like, how we're gonna make more content chart. I mean, okay. more, 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 more. And how do you find the time? Yeah. Like, oh, I know you're gonna answer oh. that. <laughs> no, no, you're gonna push it. Truthfully, we're, we're already running the business Look, like a yeah. ton. I see two people here, yeah. whether, yeah. whether they're working for free or getting paid, Paid, I you buy time. Very true. Yes, you buy time. Leveraging yeah, leveraging. Time of others. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, you buy time. Well, that's exactly what we did with them coming I with us, them. right? I see them because it's kind of like a dream of them, and Camille loves you, so we Thank brought them along. <laughs> because Gary, that's that is the way we have always done our business. Yeah. It's not about us. Number no. one, it's when, about who we can bring with yeah. us on the journey. And and that becomes a selfless act that is selfish because it makes you happy. Yeah. It, right? does. Very it does. True. I Very true. I understand it. Me too. Like the four minute conversation I had with Jason yesterday like makes me pumped, yeah. right? Like getting so close to Seth and seeing him get engaged last week. Like, Congratulations. That makes me- Congratulations. <laughs> you know, like, like to me, I, I genuinely get happiness from other people getting happy mainly because I'm pretty emotionally fulfilled. Yes. Yeah. Once you're happy, what? The only logical next step is to make other people happy. There is yeah. no more. So I get it, but the answer is you have to make your actions map your ambitions. Okay. So I have no idea how big you want to be. Big. Great. So then you I'm, ba- I'm the one that ready? drives that. Ready? Yeah. So, <laughs> she's like, so you basically have I'm to. I'm happy. <laughs> understood. So you basically have to leave short term vanity things because yeah. if you want to be big, then you have to make sacrifices. But did you let go of control for that to happen? 100%. Like, and that's a difficult if thing. You, if you talk to my team right now, they'll tell you the level of autonomy that I give them creatively and process wise is. And and how long did that take you to get to that point? I've always been basically in that point because that was a natural strength of mine realizing practically. See the interesting thing about me that I don't talk a whole lot about is I would argue that I'm disproportionately more practical than I am emotional and people are confused by that because I'm so high energy and I'm so vibed out that it disguises my level of practicality. I haven't been able to build these 80, 200 million dollar businesses out of charisma. It's been operational. So very quickly, I realized scale came in 98 people doing a seven of my 10 versus one person doing a 10. But that's so hard to let go. It's not really no. hard if you're fortunate enough to not have ego. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, Gary. <laughs> you, you nailed I mean it. it. I, I mean <laughs> it, I mean it, I mean it. And honestly, and uh, honestly, oh it's, a, it's a fun thing to say mainly because it, you know, ego is just insecurity disguised. Very true, it is. And so, it's so true. And so, yeah. but, but listen, you'll appreciate this. I have empathy. It's, you know, the hardest thing to let go is the image of oneself. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's one thing if you're letting go how people stock your shelves in a liquor store, which I did, which my dad couldn't. Yeah. Or a million other things. I've let go the most valuable thing of all. They are actually 100% in control of my image. 
I love it. I mean, I do not micromanage. It's absurd when you think about the level. Here's why. I believe the truth always wins. So if Seth went rogue, I mean, Seth tomorrow could, leave. could not leave. He could literally record the first two minutes of the podcast and be like, hey guys, this is Seth. Let me actually tell you the truth about Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's glad. But, like, but, but I would never know. There is no checks and balances. I blindly trust Seth. Yeah. yeah. Mainly because I know who I actually am. The reason That's I'm not true. scared is every mistake is fixable when the truth and good is on your side. 100%. Yeah. I totally believe that. That we had we had an incident happen on Friday. Yeah, and we actually went down a yeah. really good place instead yeah. of going instead to a of bad freaking place. out. Yeah, pa- do, being the bigger person. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, is always the move. Yeah, and I had to be. I made a huge mistake. And it's Great. constant reminder each day and every moment yeah. to be that person. And I the, learned from it. And let me tell you this: the world doesn't get upset at you for the mistake. It gets upset at you for the cover up. Yes. And she phoned the client. I phoned it. them and told yeah. them the truth. I was like, I'm so sorry. And she's like, Angela, I thought honestly something bad was happening. I'm like, I did. I forgot to order your chair. She's like, no, that's not a mistake. She's like, it's not at the end of the world. I'm like, to me, because it, it was my ego. Because I A hundred percent. It was my ego. But you owned the mistake. I owned the mistake. I a hundred percent owned and she was and, okay and with it. by the way, not everybody's going to own the mistake. You no. didn't own it right away. Hence why you had to get into that part. Right? Well, um, I was shocked. I was actually, yeah, because I yeah. was 100% shocked. I actually made it, I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I basically live my life expecting to make substantial mistakes on yeah. a daily basis, mainly because humans are flawed. I mean, the biggest problem with our society right now is hypocrisy. All we do is deploy judgment on others while we're doing something yes. else that's wrong. And yes. I think we find as females that we judge each other oh. even more. So when you talk yeah. about like being a mom and working mm-hmm. or me not having kids, I'm judged all the time and, and honestly, ask why. I, uh, you'll appreciate this. I've looked at that issue a little bit out mm-hmm. of curiosity. It's a big issue. It's a big. It's a very big issue. And I think it's a proper reaction from women in our society because I, I as a white male, come from a place of abundance. I don't think there's limited spots. Women do. Oh, women yeah. really do, because you're always competing for that number one spot. Number one spot. Or that only spot amongst yeah. all the other spots, because yeah. only one woman can fill it, yes. not eight guys. And so, you know, I have a lot of empathy to how women got there. Yeah. I'm just hopeful that the next century, it will dissolve over time. I hope so. I hope I instill that into my daughter that, you know, don't, be, don't judge other women, you know? Just... Don't judge anybody, man. Don't judge I'm, anybody. I'm, I'm obsessed exactly. right now on judgment. And be happy. I'm just so angry. And I don't get angry. I'm angry at people's ability to judge with deep levels of hypocrisy on the back end. Yeah. I, am, I am sure of the following statement. Every person I've ever seen in society has done things that they're not proud of. Oh, 100%. Definitely. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've never, Every, I yeah. know everybody it. Has. I know it's yeah. a fact. Everybody does. Thus. And if they, they're lying. If they're thus. I don't have the capability of judging somebody else's life. I don't know what's going on in their bedroom, in their house, in their head, in their relationship. I just hate judge. I'm, I'm, I'm crippled by judgment. I hate yeah. it. I want to eliminate it. Yeah. I feel the same way. You know, as meditation has become a big thing in our culture, I've, I don't meditate, but I kind of live a very thoughtful, mindful, spiritual, macro intriguing mindset life. I'm, I often say that I live in a cocoon. Uh, I go to myself. You go to I'm yourself. I'm self-soothing. You know, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. When you ask that question, I literally thought about a cat licking itself. I'm not kidding. I've never used this analogy ever. I know my team has never heard this. <laughs> I, 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 and and I, think you're, I think you're gonna find this really funny. I don't, this is true. I don't know why cats lick themselves. I guess that's how they bathe themselves. They clean I do themselves. Yeah. They clean themselves, yeah. I, I would tell you that I do a mental version of that. I am within myself. I am not in need of an outside or, or other force to navigate what's going on in my life. I've also never experienced the death of somebody disproportionately close to me because I lost all my grandparents except for one uh, and didn't have a very large family. So here I am at 43 years old and not losing my parents, siblings, children, spouse. Um, so, you know, I'm maybe gonna need it then. The only thing I really do care about is those 11, 12, 13 people. Like, I wish people actually knew how real that is to me. I think people say it and they're mm-hmm. not truthful. 
Yeah. I think people yeah. say, all I care about is my family, but then I watch their actions, and it's not true. I um, don't go to anybody, I go to myself. That's amazing. I do, That's I go awesome. to myself in my sleep, in my showers, in my flights, in those moments where I have a second to myself where I'm not working every second. I go to myself. That's amazing. I'm jealous. <laughs> and, and honestly, a lot of what I'm trying to put into the world is trying to get people into that. Lately, I've been yeah. doing, you know, at a keynote recently, yeah. I've been doing this kind of like, I've only done this shtick now a couple times where I put my fingers in my ears. I'm like, my happiness comes from this. You're in a voice. You know, I can't hear anybody. You know, when you can't hear anybody for real, yeah. and, I, and I wanna really go here right now. I'm but not you don't even hear your wife in your I ear? I do not hear my wife. Come or my, on, or Gary. My, I don't. <laughs> in, in its, and it's funny, you went there, and that's where I was about to go. In its truth, in its purest form, when you don't hear your spouse or your parents or your children, that's it. That's why I am who I am. I don't hear it. That's a I, really tough I, place to get to. It's, uh, yeah. Because it feels like you're, uh, everybody always wants something yeah. from you, so you're, you're basically pulled. like, And especially not, yeah. you, you're probably pulled in like a million different directions. Guys, I mean, I, look, I think I have a unique life for a reason. I really do know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I do know that. Like, I don't have this admiration or success or notoriety or the thing that's happening with me is the byproduct of who I am. Couple things, back to ego, insecurity, confidence, all that stuff. Yeah. A, I don't think I did that. I think Gary V is the byproduct of Tamara and Sasha Vaynerchuk, the byproduct of capitalism in America, like the byproduct of a kid who was born with nothing and had to earn his keep. So like, That's true. so like yeah. when people like, when, when this nice feelings that I'm getting from you guys come, you'd be so surprised how much that doesn't go to me, which keeps me disproportionately grounded. So that's how you don't have an ego. That's exactly yeah, right. Exactly. You know, and it's like, I have confidence. Yeah, because you I definitely have, res- have a lot have of confidence. Tons. Yeah. <laughs> but I have such disproportionate amounts of humility because I'm aware of the truth, which is I had less to do with this I think people are confused that they're the byproduct of much more than they are. I think their children, their businesses, like my pride in my children and definitely my businesses will be very high because that's me architecting. Yeah. My community I'm very proud of. The positivity and positivity with, with non-delusion is yes. very difficult to create. I don't want to be the secret. You know, I don't even want to be, you know, Tony Robbins or Oprah, I've got a different kind of slight gear to it which comes with a level of practicality and accountability and lack of entitlement that is a little bit different. And I do think that's why it's happening. But it's very quiet in my head, very, very, very quiet. I am disproportionately not anxious. That's good. That's tough not to have anxiety. (laughs) <laughs> I agree. Yeah. As anxiety has grown in our it, society. It has. Completely grown. You I'm, don't sleep at night. I'm less anxious than I've ever been. Well, I didn't sleep last night because I was so excited to meet you. I get excited. <laughs> that happened last night, I, I don't sleep before a big Jets game. That I understand. That's, that's called excitement. But, but worrying doesn't come natural to me because I feel in control. And here's where being quiet helps. I'm so comfortable if I make 13 bad business decisions, lose everything. Every article on earth is written, see, I told you, he was full of shit. He wasn't good. He wasn't as good as he thought. This is why don't be the next Gary V as a headline. That doesn't bother me. I'll tell you why. Number one, if I go on to lose everything from a business standpoint, I deserve those headlines. True. Number yeah. two, I don't care. Because I feel capable of coming back and then I get to rise like a phoenix and then do it all again. And so I think being quiet in your head is a big deal. I'm not worried about who thinks I'm ugly or stupid or full of shit or not capable or not as good as I think. I just, I, you know what's funny, I respect it, I hear it, but I don't consume it. I definitely don't internalize it and I don't live my life predicated on it. So are you going to be teaching lessons on that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I'm doing it. You, you are. are. You yeah. really are because I we listen to it and do all like we listen to all your like podcasts and YouTube and everything, and it can, has completely changed, changed the way that us. I think. Yeah. And before I say something, I think, 
with the comparison or the judgment or getting upset when Angela mis- makes a mistake at work. It's I actually a, take a couple minutes It now. makes, like you don't even, like I wish there was data on the chemicals that are going through my body when I listen to you because I believe you. And let me tell you something. As you continue to go through the process, it's bonkers. It's just. Oh, 100% it is. It just gets better well, yeah. and better and better you actually better. feel so much better because you're not bringing home all that negativity. Yeah. Like if I get upset at work, I don't want to bring it home. So to I don't want to ha- even yeah. have it at work. No. Because people are with us all day. You're also like, once you start actually letting go and realize you weren't in control of it anyway. You're never. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's so like, true. Like I'm not in, like, you know why I give full autonomy? What am I going to sit on Seth's head and just watch, <laughs> what he do- and watch what he does? That's why I have scale. Yeah. yeah. You want to build something big? It's about fundamentally letting go of everything except the 1% of things that matter, which are your actions. Very true. Yeah. And we've love- learned that now because we have, we, it's an all ladies. There's eight yeah. of us, there's 10 of us that work together, all ladies, and we get along like a family, yeah. which is very rare. Makes me really happy. It means you're, commu- I said in the beginning and I'm saying it towards the end now, it's communication. Oh, It's oh, yeah. empathy, it's kindness, it's gratitude. It's these soft skills. And look, for me, the most exciting thing that's happening in my life, which is a very similar thing to what's going on with you, but I don't think people see it as obviously with me. So you guys must be disproportionate, I can sense it, proud about the impact you're having on female entrepreneurship Definitely. and happiness, yes. right? I think an underlining thing that I don't see, I don't think people are realizing what I'm actually up to. When I tell you the level of pride I have that I'm rewiring 15 to 25 year old alpha males and making things that have never been cool to alpha men cool, like empathy, like kindness, Mm. like gratitude, that is very far away from bottles and models and hooking up and money and private, I mean, the stark difference between what these kids are getting from me on my Instagram feed versus what they're getting from almost everybody else, the level of impact that I will have on society if I pull this off to the level that I think I'm pulling it off is remarkable because there's very few people that are capable to penetrate a 17 year old kid, for that kid to think that that person's cool, to change their mindset, that then stuffs them, once they think that person's cool, with propaganda of being a kind and awesome human being. So true. And I think Gary, for us, what we wanna do is do the exact same thing, but with females, especially females that maybe have been mothers, stay at home for 18 years, and then their kids leave, and they don't know who they are and they've never done anything with their life. Because we see a lot of people right now that are and, clients and, and you know what's and amazing? Lost. And what's amazing when you say that sentence, what just transpired, I, I see you Tyler, we're about to leave and it's a great way to end. <laughs> I, as an operator, and I know this is not how you meant it, so, but I wanna yeah. tell you what yeah. just happened in my brain. 18 years, never did anything with their life. You're talking about professional, professional. versus- Professional, yeah, I'm not meaning anything I know, anything I know, I know, I know, that's why I hedged it up front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These skills, to manage one to four children, very different because you love them in a different way than your employees, but give me a 52-year-old woman who quickly went into motherhood and navigated that dynamic, I believe the current landscape of business, which is becoming disproportionately more emotional intelligence than skills, Mm Women from the 50s, 60s, 70s, what we all grew up with. Yes. Now, you, when the world in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s were vocational, when the skill was the value, yes. well then one would say, ooh, that's tough. You now have to learn a craft at 49. I believe we have now entered a world where emotional intelligence and management is the most valuable disproportionate. When you think of the comps of running a family as a mother, there is an enormous bandwidth and capability of juggling a lot of emotions at one time. I think we're gonna see the golden era of women that are gonna be able to have their cake and eat it too that starts right about now. But they have to learn to believe in themselves yeah, first, right? They because the they're, well, that, they don't have the courage. You'll, you'll appreciate this. That's for every single human being on earth. Oh, yeah, you know, many, you know how many 49-year-old men do not believe in themselves? Yep. Most. <laughs> So 
in the macro, of course. But the belief got us here with yeah, you today we sitting. Did. We're I coming from a little I small town it. in Canada. <laughs> I get it. We have a gift for you. Oh, and I will wear it. Can this, you be our Friday babe? 100%. This, this is so our belief. Every Friday Don't we wait, do a babe. Up. Like she's our babe. I and we have babe it. supporting babes. And it's that's done. our thing. So you're our babe. You're our babe. Friday. Am I? You're, I'm not in the office Friday. No, but we're going to take a picture with you. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you, everybody listening on the podcast. Have a happy holiday. Remember, Terry loves you. This is amazing. So that's a little brand out of makeup. Amazing. Let's do it. Let's do and it. And then, of course, we wore these shirts because we I'm bought all your I wine. I saw. Thank <laughs> you so much. And you got it. For the wall? Yeah, that's a PG man for the wall. Seth, wall. <laughs> wall. Photos. Can you guys can you take photos? All right, guys, I'm just following my camera. Okay.